Today, we will talk about the attitude indicator, also known as the artificial horizon. This is one of the basic flight instruments that we will find in any aircraft, and its operation is based on the gyroscopic principles. Now, as mentioned in the video about the gyroscopic system, most of the light aircraft have the following configuration. The vacuum pump provides suction to drive the gyros of the attitude indicator and the heading indicator, while the gyro of the turn coordinator is electrically driven by direct current from the aircraft electrical system. However, we must say that there are other configurations, and therefore the attitude indicator can also be driven by electric current in some cases. With this being said, let's now see what information is provided by this instrument. The attitude indicator, also known as the artificial horizon, is an instrument that measures the attitude of the aircraft in relation to the horizon, in terms of pitch and bank. In simple terms, the bank angle is the inclination of the wings in relation to the horizon. And here we can see how it is indicated in the instrument. On the other hand, the pitch angle is the inclination of the nose of the aircraft in relation to the horizon, as we can see in this example. Now, although the indication of the instrument is quite intuitive, let's look at the parts of the attitude indicator. First, we have the miniature aircraft in the middle, and as its name suggests, it will represent the wings and the nose of the aircraft. Then, we have the artificial horizon, represented by this white line, which separates the upper part, which represents the sky, from the lower part, which represents the ground. Now, as we can see, the instrument has several markings and scales, so let's look at them separately, starting with the banking scale. It is located in the upper part of the instrument, where the current bank angle of the aircraft is indicated by the bank indicator, which in this case is this yellow bug. In this particular example, we can see that the wings of the aircraft are leveled, so the bank angle indicated is zero degrees. The scale has several markings to either side that represent 10, 20, 30, 45, 60, and 90 degrees of bank. Now, something important to note is that this instrument indicates the bank angle only, which is the angle between the horizon and the lateral axis of the aircraft, as we can see here. In this case the bank indicator is pointing the third marking in the right side of the banking scale, which represents a 30-degree bank to the right. Now, we must bear in mind that this instrument does not indicate whether the aircraft is turning or not. It only indicates the bank angle. The instrument used to determine if the aircraft is turning and how fast it is doing it is the turn coordinator. With this being said, let's continue with the pitch scale. The pitch angle is indicated by this little point in the middle of the miniature aircraft. In this case, as we can see, the point is right on the horizon line, which indicates a pitch of zero degrees. On the pitch scale, the long lines represent increments of 10 degrees of pitch, either up or down, while the short lines represent increments of 5 degrees. Now, it is important to note that the instrument indicates only the pitch angle, which is the angle between the horizon and the longitudinal axis of the aircraft, as we can see in this image. In this case, the pitch indicator is at the 10 degree nose up mark, which means that the nose is pointing 10 degrees up in relation to the horizon. Now, another thing to bear in mind is that this instrument does not indicate whether the aircraft is climbing or descending, since it only indicates the attitude of the aircraft in relation to the horizon. The instrument used to determine if the aircraft is actually climbing or descending is the vertical speed indicator. There are different models and designs of the attitude indicator, both analog and digital. And although they have slight differences, the information they provide is the same. Let's see some examples of how to interpret this instrument. In this case, the instrument is indicating a pitch of zero degrees and a bank angle of 18 degrees to the left. In this other example, the instrument indicates a pitch of eight degrees nose up and a bank angle of zero degrees. Here, it now indicates a pitch of nine degrees nose up and a bank angle of 10 degrees to the right. In this other case, we can see a pitch of 9 degrees nose up and a bank angle of 20 degrees to the right. And in this last one, 
it indicates a pitch of 2 degrees nose down and a bank angle of 0 degrees. Now, in all of these examples, a conventional bank indicator was used. However, some attitude indicators incorporate a sky pointer as a bank indicator. Basically, a sky pointer is a bank indicator that remains fixed pointing upwards, while the banking scale is the one that moves to indicate the bank angle. As a consequence of this design, when the aircraft starts banking to one side, the sky pointer will move to the opposite side. In this example as we can see, the aircraft is banking to the right, while the bank indicator is on the left side of the scale. This can be quite confusing for some pilots, especially those who usually fly with conventional bank indicators. Let's see in more detail how a sky pointer works. In this example, we can see the sky pointer indicating a bank angle of zero degrees. Now, let's suppose the aircraft starts banking to the left. As we can see, the miniature aircraft shows the left bank correctly. However, the bank indicator is on the right side of the scale. The opposite happens if the aircraft banks to the right. In this case, the miniature aircraft shows the right bank correctly, but the bank indicator moves to the left side of the scale. The key to avoid confusion when reading this instrument is to use the bank indicator only to determine the angle and use the miniature aircraft to determine the direction of banking. Now, another feature of some attitude indicators, especially those manufactured in the United States, is an adjustment knob. It allows the pilot to adjust the miniature aircraft with the instrument horizon according to the pilot's point of view and the attitude of the aircraft when flying straight and level. Here we can see an example of how the miniature aircraft moves when the adjustment knob is rotated. However, a problem with this design is that an inadequate adjustment of the miniature aircraft can cause problems in the indication of the actual attitude of the aircraft, especially when flying in IMC conditions or during the night, since there are no visual references to confirm the attitude of the aircraft. For these reasons, some civil aviation authorities in other countries have decided to prohibit or restrict the use of this adjustment knob. Despite this, there are many aircraft today that incorporate this feature, so as a rule of thumb, the miniature aircraft should only be adjusted on the ground or when flying straight and level in VMC conditions. Another component that can be found on some instruments is a red flag, which is visible when the instrument's gyroscope is not working properly, thus indicating that the instrument should not be used. So far, we have seen the parts of the instrument and how to read it. Let's now see how it works internally. As we already mentioned, the attitude indicator uses the gyroscopic effect of rigidity in space to measure the attitude of the aircraft in relation to the horizon. This instrument incorporates a vertical gyroscope so that the plane of rotation is parallel to the real horizon, as we can see in this image. Apart from this, the gyro has three degrees of freedom, which means that it is free to rotate in all three axes. This implies that, once aligned with the real horizon, the gyro will remain rigid in space, regardless of aircraft movements. That's why it is an excellent reference for measuring the attitude of the aircraft. Let's now see how the pitch attitude is measured using this gyro. On the right side we have the instrument as the pilot would see it, while on the left side we see the instrument from the side. Inside we have the gyro, whose plane of rotation is parallel to the horizon. In this case, the instrument is indicating a pitch attitude of zero degrees. Let's suppose now that the aircraft pitches up. In this case, both the aircraft and the instrument will pitch up, while the gyro will remain rigid in space, aligned with the horizon. This way, the instrument can measure and show the current pitch attitude of 15 degrees nose up. The opposite way, if the aircraft pitches down. Both the aircraft and the instrument will pitch down, while the gyro will remain rigid in space, aligned with the horizon. Thus measuring and indicating the current pitch attitude of 20 degrees nose down. Let's now see the bank indication. Here, in both cases we see the instrument from the front side. Inside we have the gyro with the plane of rotation aligned with the horizon. In this case, if the aircraft starts banking to the right, 
both the aircraft and the instrument bank to the right, while the gyro remains rigid in space, allowing to measure and indicate the current bank angle of 30 degrees. An additional fact regarding this example is that the bank indicator is a sky pointer, so although the aircraft banks to the right, the indicator is on the left side of the scale. Now, the opposite happens if the aircraft banks to the left. In this case, both the aircraft and the instrument will bank to the left, while the gyro remains rigid in space, aligned with the horizon, thus allowing to measure and indicate the current bank angle of 30 degrees. Now, although this instrument is very useful for determining pitch and bank attitude quickly and accurately, it has some limitations. And it is that, although theoretically the instrument's gyro has three degrees of freedom, in reality it has mechanical stops that prevent the gyro from rotating completely freely. This means that if the aircraft reaches excessive pitch or bank angles, the mechanical stops will prevent the gyro from rotating freely, causing the instrument to topple and become inoperative for a few minutes while it realigns with the horizon. Here is an example of what happens if the pitcher bank limits are exceeded. On older instruments, it is common to find pitch limits of 60 degrees and bank limits of around 100 degrees. While in the more modern ones we can find less restrictive limits of 85 degrees of pitch and no bank limits. Now, another effect that is present in this instrument is the gyroscopic apparent wander. Let's try to explain it simply. When a gyroscope starts spinning, it will tend to remain rigid in space. However, the thing is that the Earth does not remain stationary, it rotates at about 15 degrees per hour. This implies that the plane of rotation of the gyro will progressively drift from the real horizon. In a vertical gyro such as the attitude indicator, this effect is maximum at the equator and minimum at the poles. Let's see a graphical example of why this happens. Let's say we are at the equator, in this yellow point, and we turn on the instrument at 4 pm. This way, the plane of rotation of the gyro is aligned parallel to the horizon. Now, past one hour, at 5 pm, the Earth will have rotated 15 degrees, while the gyro remains rigid in space in its original position. So if we measure now the angle between the actual horizon and the plane of rotation of the gyro, we will find that it is 15 degrees. Which means in other words, that the attitude indication of the instrument will be incorrect by 15 degrees. As we can see, this effect worsens with time. So at 6 pm, the Earth will have rotated another 15 degrees, so now the difference between the horizon and the plane of rotation of the gyro will be 30 degrees, and so on. It is therefore important that the plane of rotation of the gyro realigns itself constantly, so it remains parallel to the horizon. To do so, it incorporates a mechanical control system that uses the Earth's gravity to keep the plane of rotation parallel to the horizon at all times. In air-driven gyros, a pendulous vanes system is used. While in the electrical-driven ones, an electrical torque motor is used. However, we will not go into detail on how these control systems work, as they are not operationally relevant. Now, some electrical-driven attitude indicators incorporate a caging knob that allows decoupling the gyro from the instrument face. This prevents the gyro from toppling during excessive attitudes or maneuvers, as it will act as a free gyro without mechanical stops. This knob is also used to quickly realign the gyro with the horizon in case it is toppled. However, this procedure should only be done in straight and level flight or on the ground to ensure an adequate alignment. I hope the information presented in this video was useful. If so, don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching.